So welcome to Yin Yoga and tonight we're going to dedicate, dedicate our practice to all you bikers out there, all you people who get on bikes and even if you don't get on a bike, what we're going to cover is definitely going to help with any activity where you're using your legs whether it's golfing, walking, etc. Let's make sure we have all the props tonight. Let's make sure we have a strap, a couple of blocks, a bolster and blanket. And let's start in bike rider pose, which is a new pose that I've never done before. So I want you to grab two blocks. <clears throat> and imagine <clears throat> imagine this is the seat of your bike and your handlebars are in front like this I'll turn sideways so you can see me so I'm sitting on my blocks and my back is rounded a little bit shoulders trying to come back and close your eyes for a moment and just feel the sensations and the tension that's in the body here. So you're sitting on your saddle. Obviously, your legs are extended down to the pedals, but one is bent. So let's try left leg bent, right leg extended. Drop the neck a little bit. And feel that grip in the wrist. So we've got wrists, we've got elbows, shoulders, neck back, abdominals, and hips and legs. All right, and then gently come out of your bike riding pose, come onto your back. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> you might want to support your head with a blanket and Let's bring the bolster back with us. Elevate the pelvis and lift the bolster. Bring the bolster underneath the hips and grab your strap. Extend the legs, extend the arms and come into this supported Shavasana in a back bend. Allow the hip flexors to gently lengthen and relax. Feel the abdominals gently relax, shoulders relaxed. So there's a slight arch in the low back. And allow the torso to open up the chest, shoulders back, palms face up. Have the palms facing up. So when we ride a bike, we have our knuckles facing towards each other. But here we want to rotate the hands so the palms face up, bringing us into an open chest. Inhale, bring up that left knee and hug the left knee. Draw it in towards your left shoulder. Curl the toes back on both feet and push out through your right heel. Activate the right leg, even though you're squeezing the left knee, activate that right leg by pushing out through the heel, toes curled back. And then switch, squeeze the right knee, activate the left leg, push out through the left heel, toes curled back on both feet. Squeezing the right knee back.
push out through that left heel a little more and then switch back to left knee grab your strap and hook up that left foot extending it into the air toes curled back now notice your knee whether your knee is bent or straight start to lower your foot towards the ground until you feel the legs straighten out and you feel a delicious stretch in the calf muscle so if you look at my angle you can see my leg is quite low maybe 25 30 degrees from the ground so it's quite low pull the toes back delicious stretch and then start to pull that foot back up keeping the knee as straight as you can toes curled back and starting to feel the hamstring here let's give that hamstring a little bit of time so you don't want to be over feeling the hamstring you want to feel the hamstring a little more than modestly but not too much that it's bending your knee let's just hang out here for a bit give that hamstring time to feel the love Curl the toes back a little more. And then take the strap into the left hand. So the right hand is free to grab your right knee. Bring the right knee up and back and squeeze the right knee towards the right shoulder. And as you do, start to pull that left foot back a little more. So you keep the hamstring engaged with the stretch. You keep the left foot toes curled back. So the calf muscle is feeling this, but you'll notice as you squeeze that right knee even more that the left leg wants to come back a little more. So you're really bringing that left leg back and this is going to release into the low back, which gets, I'm sure gets very tired after a long bike ride. Spread the toes, push through that left heel, keep holding that right knee. That hamstring has got a lot of time now to release. Keeping the toes curled back, start to abduct the leg. So you bring that left leg out to the left and you pull the right knee out to the right. So now we move into the sister muscle of the hamstring, the adductor. The adductor gets nice and tight. It loves to tighten up when her sister muscle gets tight hamstring and adductor love to come in that tight pair bundle push out through the left heel so you keep that internal stretch on the left thigh plus that hamstring is getting plenty of time in the extended position now remember because it's yin yoga anytime it feels like you've gone too long or too much Take a break, listen to your body, and come back. Whew. All right, slowly bring those knees back together. Drop the right foot to the ground. 
and pull the strap off the left foot. Point and flex the toes of the left foot. Just feel the ankle joint after all that work. So when we ride the bike, of course, the ankles are giving a lot of movement, repetitive movement there. Let's rotate the ankle joint. And then grab that left knee, grab that left foot and hug it in into pigeon pose across the chest. That's right, grab your right, left foot with the right hand, left knee with the left hand, and then slowly straighten out the right leg if it's not already straightened. So we're getting into the left leg and the left hip in a whole different way with pigeon. And then gently release the left leg to the floor. Straighten the left leg out if it's not already straightened. Relax the hands. Now bring your attention into the left hip and the left leg. And notice if you can feel any lingering sensations from all that work. Does the, or do the sensations linger on and remain even though the pose has finished? Let's pick up that right leg and capture the right foot. I like to bring the strap approximately around where the ball and the arch meet. So it's more towards the, the toes than it is the heel. And then start to drop the foot down towards the ground, getting that nice 25 degree, 30 angle. So you can push out through the right heel and you really feel this in the right calf muscle. Now start to bring that right leg up until you feel it in the hamstring. So you pull it back, you feel the hamstring start to kick in. And usually that's where the knee wants to bend or the toes want to straighten, or you start holding your breath or grimacing. So you wanna kind of just hold that edge where it's deliciously uncomfortable, but not enough to make you um, react against the stretch and those of you who've worked with me a lot know that this is the prime um, prime directive of yin yoga is to find delicious discomfort so you can hang out here for several minutes because there's a lot of plantar flexion of the foot, the ankle joint is definitely working here, toes are curled back, push out through the heel bone, keep that hamstring engaged. And we keep that pose going, this time both ends of the strap in the right hand. So the left hand is free to hold the left knee. 
So this is where pulling back the left knee allows us to pull that right leg back. It keeps the hamstring stretching and it also starts to take the stretch into the low back now. Now your right hand can be up towards the foot. I like it a little higher here. My right hamstring definitely feeling this now. Push through that right heel. So everybody's legs look good. That's great. Excellent. Now we haven't talked much about breathing tonight. In every yin class, when you remember, come back to your slow, gentle breath. Breathing in and out of the nose tonight. Using the focus on the breath to create a state of tranquility in the nervous system. Even though the stretch sensations are telling the nervous system a different story. Squeeze that left knee a little more. Can you pull that right leg back a little more? Keep that hamstring feeling it. Let's come into abduction here. So right hand pulls that right leg out to the right. Left knee comes out to the left. So we start to get that right adductor stretched and at the same time push through the right heel. So we keep the back of the right leg honest here, the calf muscle and the hamstring are still getting plenty of release. That looks good. <sighs> now you just heard me sigh so sometimes when we come into deep stretches like this tension may bubble up and letting it out with a sigh <sighs> is really a great natural way to release tension So rather, once you hear somebody sigh, rather than say what's wrong, you could sigh as well. Can you go a little further with the abduction and the heel pressing out? For five. Four, three, two, and then slowly bring the knees back. Release the left foot to the floor. And let the strap fall away from that right foot. Bend the right knee and grab the right foot into pigeon across the chest. And then extend the left leg out. So with the left leg extended out, just feel the hip flexor on that left side. The hip flexors when we ride bikes can get very tight, very tight.
slow conscious breath here. There it is, there's my sigh. And then release that right foot. Um, before we do, let's grab the back of the hamstring and just point and flex that right foot. I think I forgot to do that when it was up. You can straighten it again if you like and point and flex. Just hold it with the hands and then rotate. So we give that right ankle some movement here as well. And then in slow-mo, let that right leg come down and join the left. <sighs> there it is. There's my third side tonight, folks. It's all happening. So the hamstrings are harboring some tension. Now, bend the knees and lift the hips and push the bolster under the thighs for a moment to take some curvature out of the low back so the low back starts to settle into the mat after all that support with the bolster reach the arms over the head reach the legs in front and come into a big stretch here and keep the arms over the head palms face up resting the back of the hands on the floor. I'm going to adjust my blanket here. You don't want the blanket under your shoulders. Just make sure whatever's under your head doesn't extend to the shoulders. Keep the shoulders free so the shoulders feel the mat. Palms face up. Let's do the rack. Extend, push out through the right heel, extend the right leg. Now reach the left hand further away from the head. So you stretch diagonally. Left hand to right foot. Push out through the left heel and the right hand reaches. So now you're stretched in all four limbs. Both legs, both arms, reach a little more. Toes spread out, fingers spread out, reach. Feel the rack pose. Feel the stretch in the belly. And then relax into your supported shavasana just bring the hands beside you palms face up let the low back settle gently turn the head to the left Inhale ahead to neutral, exhale ahead to the right.
All right, we're going to do a little experiment. We'll see how it works. Gently bend the knees, stand the feet on the bolster and roll over to one side. Curl up into a little ball. And then gently press up. You're going to need your strap and your bolster for this. Like I said, it's an experiment. It just came to me. I haven't done it before, but it might work. So we're going to bring the thighs on top of the bolster and lay on the belly. So the knees are off the ground. The knees are on the bolster. And it's a kind of variation of crocodile pose. Normally in crocodile pose, we don't have anything under the legs. We just feel the whole body on the mat. But tonight we have the, th the thighs on the bolster, closer to the knee joint, further away from the hips. So you don't want it right up under the hips here. You want to feel your belly on the ground. Now bend both knees, so your hamstring is contracting here. So what does that mean? If the hamstring is contracting, it means the quadricep is stretching. And usually that means you're in a back bend. So feel this modest back bend. And then drop your feet and grab your strap. So the goal here now is to bend the left knee and grab the left foot with your hand or a strap. So I'm just going to hold it with a strap. You see how my strap here has got that left foot. And I come back to a kind of crocodile pose, resting the head on one arm. My other hand, my left hand, is holding the strap, holding the foot. So there's a little more intensity here in the quadricep stretch. The right leg is extended. So as we, as we pull the left foot back, notice where you're feeling sensations in the quadricep, in the knee joint, in the left hip flexor. Because the thighs are elevated, that left hip flexor is getting some work. Now, some of you might be able to reach back with your left hand and take over the stretch with the left hand rather than the strap. So you're either holding that left foot with the strap or your left hand. Holding it with the hand, you can start to pull it back a little more towards the buttocks to increase the sensation. If you're holding the strap, you can also pull it the strap tighter to increase the sensation looking for delicious discomfort, not pain. We're holding this quadricep stretch for quite a while. Hamstring is contracted. If at any time you get a hamstring cramp, turn onto your back, lift your leg into the air, and push the heels to heaven and stretch the hamstring. Now some of you might be able to take your right hand back 
and have both hands grab that left foot. So now you get more of a stretch into that left quadricep. So you've got two hands pulling the foot back or one hand or the strap. So we're all giving that quadricep and knee joint and the foot and the toes and the shin plenty of release here. Let's do five more breaths. On that fifth breath, gently release the foot. Stack the hands. And then notice if you can feel any contrast between that left leg and the right leg. So bend the right knee and capture the right foot with your strap or your hand. So you reach back. Resting the forehead on that front hand. Look for delicious discomfort, strap or hand. Let your attention drift back to your breathing as you sustain this quadricep extension. Remembering at any time, if you want to progress from strap to hand or from one hand to two hands, you can. Keep the breath moving slowly. And every now and then, no matter which progression you're using, strap one or two hands, just pull the foot back a little more to see if there's any more release in the quadricep. Let's do five more breaths here. If you can. And then release, stack the hands under the forehead. Letting both thighs rest over the bolster. Inhale, bring the hands under the shoulders, press up onto all fours. And just notice how the legs are feeling, hips. Wag your tail a little bit, side to side. Cat and cow. And then see if you can move your hips in a circle. If 
first in one direction and then the other. Let's move the bolster out of the way and stand the blocks at the top of the mat. Let's get into the hips and the hip flexors with dragon pose. So with dragon pose, bring that left foot forward. Curl the toes of the right foot and walk your right knee back a little bit and drop the toes. If your knees are uncomfortable, consider bringing a blanket or a towel under your back knee. If you lean forward into the blocks, you'll feel more sensation in the right hip flexor and the left adductor. You can also lower the blocks at any time, bringing the hands closer to the floor, or you could bring your hands onto the floor. Some of you could bring your forearms down onto the blocks. So each progression is a choice. Is it the right amount of sensation or is it too much? Now we're going to get into that front hip a little more by pivoting the left foot out to the left of the mat. So the toes come onto the floor off the mat, you've rotated that left foot to the left around the heel joint. So the heel stayed still, but the toes pivoted, turning your foot out. Now that might mean you could come down lower towards the floor. Remembering the lower you go, the more you'll feel this in the left AD, duct of the hip and the back hip flexor. And hopefully your hamstring is happy with this at this point after all that stretching. Feel the sensations. Come back to the breath. and come back to relaxation. Even with all that sensation, can you relax the head, neck, shoulders? Chest. So I'm starting to feel a little cramp in my right foot in the arch. So you might, little sensations might start to arise. You can always curl the toes and lift that knee of that back leg to get rid of the cramp and then drop it again. Let's bring the hands under the shoulders. Walk that left foot, left knee back. Cat and cow. Let's wag the tail side to side. And then some hip circles.
other direction. And then right foot forward. Set up your blocks on this side. Walk that left knee back if you need to. Look for appropriate sensation. And then start to relax into the shape. Let relaxation and gravity and your breath hold you steady in the the fire of the dragon. You might feel the hips relaxing here, almost like the hips are just melting into it. One side might be different, so bear with that difference. Your hands can come down lower at any time. Forearms are legal. Feel yourself melting towards the mat, melt into dragon. Consider pivoting the right foot to the right. So you're turning that right foot outwards, toes point out. And that opens up that internal right thigh, getting its share of sensation. Relax the shoulders. Look for that tranquil breath. If you can come back to a tranquil breath in your shape, in your pose, you're doing amazingly high level yoga. Tranquil breath, ease of being, while the intensity is present. Let the hips melt. Let the hips melt. This sign number four. Gently bring the hands under the shoulders. Knees come back, cat and cow. Side to side, wag your tail. And then 
and hip circles. Other way. Let's prepare for deer pose. Slide the right knee forward to the right wrist. Pivot the right foot underneath your left hip and walk your left knee back until you feel a stretch like pigeon pose. And then roll onto your right thigh. Lean into your right hand. Bend your back knee and push that right foot so that the shin is parallel to the top of the mat. You might like to have your blocks handy. Scoop the flesh from the right side of your belly out of the way and then lay your belly over that front thigh. <clears throat> So your nose is just south of the kneecap if you look down. Let's have the block there and rest the head on the block at whatever level works for you. And just start to feel this in the back of the hips, the low back and the legs. At the moment, I have my head up nice and high on the block, so I'm going to rotate the block down to the next level. This puts a little more pressure on the belly and the thigh. Also, you feel this in the piriformis on the right side, the back of the right hip, the outside of the right leg. If your body is acclimating, getting comfortable with this, consider walking the hands out, away from the head, straightening the arms, stretching forward into your full expression of deer pose. Walk the hands back. Let the hands hold you up for a moment. Lean into that right hand and bring your left hand back behind your body. Come into a little rotation here. I've got my left hand, my back hand on a bolster so it's a comfortable rotation. You might want to bring a block under the hand. Just bring in that left shoulder back. And then we'll change sides. So I'm going to change orientation just so you can see it on the camera. So I will face the top of the mat, starting cat and cow. A little puppy wag the tail, left and right. And then a little hip circle each direction slide the left knee forward to that left wrist swivel the foot underneath your right hip walk your right knee back so you feel that stretch and now this is where we change it 
from a pigeon to a deer pose. Lean onto the right thigh. Lean into that left hand so you're tilted to the left. Bend the back knee. And then find a way to bring that front shin parallel to the top of the mat. Scoop the flesh from the left side of the belly. I'm going to grab a block here. <laughs> My blocks are back there. And then lean forward so your rib cage is coming over that left thigh. And my knee, my nose is kind of just down from the kneecap. And then rest the head. At whatever height works for you. And spend the first 10 breaths or so just acclimating, feeling, noticing what it's like to let the torso slump over that thigh, really relaxing the shoulders and neck. Supporting the head is nice. There may come a point, there may come a point where you feel like you could reach the arms away from the head. And that's going to bring the head forward. So the block may, may no longer be of service as you reach the arms out, creating a lot of length in the ribs here. Now, at any time that gets too much, you can always drop the elbows and walk your hands back. So you've got complete control over the intensity that works for you. There's a lot of sensation in the left thigh, outer, inner. The right side of the back, definitely reaching and stretching. big impact on the breathing system. So there's a lot going on in deer pose. Can you relax in the midst of that intensity? Reach a little further if you can. Four more breaths. On that fourth breath, walk the hands back. Walk the hands back. and come into a comfortable kneeling position, Vajrasana. So one or two blocks. If it's too much for your knees, elevate the hips, or you could straighten one or both legs out in front of you. So look after those knees, feel the stretch in the top of the foot, the shin, find the weight balance between sit bones. Roll the shoulders up, back and down, palms face up on the thighs near the hip crease, elbows back a little bit and against the ribs, that's it. So you feel the open chest. Close the eyes and create a slight Mona Lisa smile. So there's a little softness in the face. Relax the hands, relax the shoulders. 
and let your sit bones sink down into the saddle of your bicycle so you feel the weight sink back into your block, into your bike seat. Let the crown of the head float up. Let the neck feel like a piece of twine, gently going with the lifting neck. No resistance from the neck. Mona Lisa smile. Notice the breath. And remember this posture, shoulders back and down, chest open, tall spine, front of the legs gently stretching. Remember this posture as a way to counteract the work on the bicycle, playing golf, Feeling the legs and the hips freed up here. Thanks for joining me tonight. Namaste.